Welcome to Compared to Who, the podcast to help you stop comparing and start living. I'm your host, Heather Creekmore. I hate to admit this, but I used to secretly obsess over my appearance. I thought it was part of my job as a woman to always look better, but never felt like I could be good enough. Maybe you can relate. God, in His grace, showed me a way out, and I want to give you all the tools you need to break free too. If you've ever spent too much time stressing over your looks, I get it. I hope you'll keep listening and find the same freedom I have. Here are three other things you should know about me. I'm a minivan driving mom of four. I'm author of the book Compared to Who and The Burden of Better. I'm a blogger at comparedtowho.me and you just may have seen my epic big fail on Netflix. If you've ever struggled with comparison or body image issues, Compared to Who is the show for you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and hey, tell a friend about it. Hey there, welcome to the Compared to Who show. I'm Heather Creekmore, and today I am with my good friend, Erin Carey, and we have an exciting topic for you. Okay, exciting may not be the right word, huh, Erin? It may be, oh, I don't know, convicting. Maybe painful or challenging or, or actually let's, let's put a positive spin on it. It's going to be insightful. We have an insightful episode for you today because today we are talking about what really happens to your body and your brain when you only eat 1500 calories a day. Now, Aaron, okay, let's start by telling everyone a little bit about you and you can fill out what I miss, but you are a certified integrative nutrition coach. Mm-hmm. You are the host of the sparking wholeness podcast. Yeah. And I, so for some people that are like, what she's a, what that doesn't make any sense. I've never heard of that. What is a certified integrative nutrition coach, Aaron? Yes, that's a great question. Um, my whole, well, my aim with being an integrative nutrition coach is having the focus be put on all of the things that give us nourishment, that food is not our primary nutrition. In fact, I would say that food is our secondary nutrition. I believe that when, well, and I say this all the time, a body and stress won't digest. Mm -hmm. So how you absorb, digest, and utilize the nutrients in your food really depends on all of the other factors in your life, your relationship with God, your relationship with others, your work environment, all of that really is the main factor. Yeah, that's awesome. And in fact, I was on a show the other day and I quoted you. <laughs> I said, my yes. friend Aaron says, a body that's stressed won't digest. <laughs> so yes, that's like one of my favorite lines. And you know, I think we'll just get right into it because that line alone has kind of caused a paradigm shift for me just so we're, I mean, you and I've been talking about this stuff together for, I don't know, six, seven years, I guess. A when, long time. It feels uh, like <laughs> you were, you just had a baby when you were writing for mm-hmm. compared to who. So yeah. h- how old is he now? <laughs> how old's Red? He's, he's going to be eight, <laughs> eight. In, okay. in December. Okay. So, so, yeah. so for eight years, we've been kind of, you know, talking mm-hmm. about this stuff and around this stuff. And, you know, I would say that probably before that point, the, I wouldn't say the goal of my life, but the way I operated in my life was you beat your body into submission. You make your body do what you want it to do. So it can look like you want it to look. And I feel like that's kind of a, I don't know, maybe a common, you know, thing that we are taught, right? Like you control your body. So you control how it looks and, and you control that by how you eat and you control that by how much you exercise. And so it doesn't matter if you are hungry and it is nine o'clock at night, you better go to bed because all the dieting rules tell us that it's better to go to bed on an empty stomach. So you wake up skinnier the next day Mm. and all of these different kinds of concepts. And now I feel like I'm getting to the point where I need to be kind to my body. That needs to be my goal. What, what do you think about that? I know that you've kind of had a similar story. What fill, fill in for me. What, why should we be kind to our bodies? What, what is that really doing? I think, well, and I'll just go, I could go the psychological level. I could go the physiological, I mean, because it's all connected. Right. Mm -hmm. But I, I really think 
something that's important to understand is the autonomic nervous system is we have two modes that we can flip flop from that is the sympathetic fight or flight response, which is super important for our survival. It's super important for recovery. It's super important for healing in our body. And it's great. We also have the parasympathetic mode, which is rest and digest also very necessary. You have to have both. And God designed us so creatively and amazingly uh, well, that we can restore, we can find healing and our bodies can flip-flop from stressed to the max to I am relaxed and I'm good. The issue is my issue with dieting in general, which we can get into and, and, and the whole, like beating your body into submission is that it keeps us in this sympathetic state of fight or flight. It keeps us in a state of, I have to do this. I'm doing this. And here's the thing. And I say, I've said this before, your body doesn't know the difference between a famine or a diet. Your body doesn't know that you're choosing to not allow a certain amount of nutrients, ingredients, macros, whatever your body just goes, Oh my goodness, I am in famine mode. Therefore I'm going to shut down digestion, shut down reproductive hormones. I'm going to, you know, throw off the thyroid, throw off whatever in order to survive the stressor. Cause your body wants to protect you and your body can't protect you. You know, if you are constantly in in the sympathetic. So we need to have sympathetic for protection, but we also need to have that recovery parasympathetic rest and digest for protection. We're supposed to flip flop into both. And these days I don't see a lot of flip flopping. I see women who are constantly stressed. We're stressed about our bodies. We're stressed about what we're eating, what we're not eating. We're stressed about our kids. We're stressed about our husbands. We're stressed about everything that's happening in the world. We're stressed about our work. We're stressed about our social media feed. We're stressed about all the notifications that we get all day long. I don't know that let's see, let's think of a biblical character, Esther. Let's take Esther because everybody loves to talk about Esther on Christian podcasts, right? I don't know if, if Esther was living like, like she was in a stressed out state. She had to have been, but I just don't know if she knew what was happening on the other side of the world all the time. I don't know if she knew what the other Jewish girls were doing in the next town over and how they were dressing and what they were looking like and what they were eating. Like it was a stressful situation. But I think that there are more periods of recovery than we have now. And, and again, you know, and I don't want to be that person that's like, oh, it's in the 21st century. Everything is worse than it ever was. Like that's, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we don't have recovery from anything. We are constantly on alert. You can't put a notification on your emails that say out of the office because we have our emails on our phone all the time. And that's stressful. Right. Or yeah. Or on my watch. Right. Yes. Like yes. I can't, I, I don't even have to open my phone. I can just read right here. Absolutely. What, <laughs> what yeah, I we're constantly know, right? connected to something. Right. And so I just, I see women, I see a lot of women who are younger than me mm-hmm. and extremely stressed out. I see a lot of women who are around my same age. I see women who are older, but I will say, I think the women who are significantly older than me aren't as burned out as the ones who are younger. Maybe that's just a stage of life thing. Mm-hmm. It could be, but I'm, I'm seeing a lot more chronic health issues in the younger population. I'm starting to see the younger population on more medications yeah. than the older population. And I think that that is just a testament to how stressful we are because, right. you know, we even have studies that show that 90% of chronic disease illness, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's related to stress. Right. It's induced by stress. We're right. doing this to ourselves. Now, again, that's going to stress you out hearing that, <laughs> but, <laughs> the, but, but there is hope, you know, and that's the whole point of talking about this. Right. 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 But I think let, let's go specifically to food, right? Because yeah. for so, so the clients yeah. I work with, one of the places we go in my coaching is let's talk about your food rules because yeah. what is hilarious is most of us have this set, uh, an infinitely long set for some of us, right? Of food rules that we have accumulated over the decades, right? Like mom told me one time not to eat anything white. And so I don't eat anything mm-hmm. white and I don't eat after nine o'clock and, you know, and I never eat, you know, this amount of fat, or if, you know, the label says this ingredient, I don't eat that. And there's all these rules, And it becomes, you know, well, I I like to talk about it as as its own religion, right? It becomes Mm -hmm. a religion of dieting. But beyond that, Mm -hmm. when you have a lot of rules that you feel 
really allegiance to, mm-hmm. it is stressful when you break them. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so, so I feel like, and you can speak to this, but I feel like we're stressing ourselves out with all these food rules. Yeah. It's, it's the food rules, but it's also, we've given control to other people about what's mm. best for our body. Mm. And we've never been able to, I mean, think about your earliest memory of, of food. That's a weird thing to even think about, but I think about lunchtime where I didn't have enough time to eat, Mm -hmm. you know, at school where I was rushed. Mm -hmm. So you have the set time. It's not based on your hunger cues. It's based Mm -hmm. on the school system, good or bad. I don't know, but it's, it set us up to go, okay, well, this is eating time. And even Mm -hmm. when we're babies, I mean, I think about when my kids were little and I'm just like shoving baby food down their throat. They don't (laughs) want it. They didn't (laughs) want it. It was fun for me. They didn't want it. But like at some point we, and I say this as a parent too, I shut down my kids intuitive hunger cues. Mm. So even my kids now and our hunger cues can get hijacked. And I, you know, that's a whole separate topic on a lot of the foods that have been created Mm -hmm. to be more addictive. That's a legit real thing. So I'm Mm -hmm. not saying just go on a free for all and whatever your body tells you to eat, eat it because Mm -hmm. uh, these days our bodies don't necessarily know they're we're programmed to eat what the companies want us to eat, (laughs) but I I just, so many of us, we just don't lean into our hunger cues and we don't have time. We don't take the time to eat or even think about what we like. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many things that I avoided because I was told I wasn't supposed to have it, but actually that was something that was probably beef. For example, beef, Mm -hmm. I was told to avoid for forever because, you know, fat or because it's red meat and, you know, heart disease or whatever. Well, guess what? When I started adding in beef, my body was so happy because it is so packed with B vitamins and healthy fats. It's an extremely nutrient dense form of protein that for my unique body works for a while that worked. Guess what? Now I don't, I don't want it as much. I don't desire it as much because I think I've kind of gotten my fill. So I've switched. I'm making sure that I'm adding a variety, but I had this rule about beef that was unfounded. And so that was stressful having the rules. I will say what's interesting. This is what's so it's almost like a I don't even know what, uh, is it oxymoron? Is that the word I'm looking for (laughs) where it's contradictory? It's contradictory that these food rules are supposed to make us feel safe, Mm -hmm. right? They're supposed to make us feel like we are in control. These are my safe foods. This is what I can eat. And so many people come to me, they want a list. What what Mm -hmm. can I have? What can I not have? And I can't do that because I'm not in your body. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I can give you general guidelines of these foods are great for brain health because I'm always going to focus on brain health. That's important. But our rules make us feel safe when, you know, what makes us feel safe is food, Mm -hmm. (laughs) eating food and nourishing our bodies Mm -hmm. makes us feel safe. When we deprive our bodies of whether it's going super, super heavy carb restriction or super calorie restriction, our bodies can go, Oh my gosh, what I'm, I just lost something and now I've got to recalibrate. And now I need to gain traction here and adjust these systems. Cause this system was functioning with this kind of food. Well, now it's not, and that's, that's really hard. And I mean, I see a lot of people doing elimination diets for autoimmune issues. And I think they have a place and a role, but I don't think they're supposed to be long-term. I think that there are therapeutic ways to use food, but it gets real weird and twisted in our heads right. and, and what, and creating those rules. Right. Right. And I mean, I talked on this show, uh, maybe a month or so ago about my own Hashimoto's and how, you know, I feel like being freer more recently mm. to just have a little gluten every now and then. Mm. And, and because you say all the time, a body that's stressed will digest. That's going through my head now, instead of, <laughs> instead of that soundtrack of don't eat gluten or you mm-hmm. will suffer forever, you know, and now, mm-hmm. now for some people, I do know that, you know, celiac right. is real, right? There's some people that, that will suffer yeah. forever, <laughs> but, but I think the important thing is right. Like what, like you said, what is right for my body. And what I have started to notice is that when I am freer to be like, okay, you know what? I think what's right for my body today is this. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, like you talk about a lot, I know, like how does it make you feel afterwards? If if I feel okay afterwards, then I know, you know what, that was probably okay Mm -hmm. for today. Now, if it makes me crash and feel awful, then, you know, maybe I need to reconsider whether or not that needs to be part of my life. But, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I think, I think that's good advice. Are you tired of comparing yourself to others? It's time to break free, my friend. Check out compared to who.me online and you'll find a ton of great resources. 
blog posts, videos, and so much more to help you stop comparing and start living. And make sure you sign up for my exclusive email list while you're there. I send my email friends things I don't send anyone else. You can also find out more about my brand new book, The Burden of Better, How a Comparison-Free Life Leads to Joy, Peace, and Rest. If you're tired of battling comparison, friend, I wrote this book just for you. Check it out right after this episode, of course. Okay, so topic of the day, though, and this is why I wanted to have you on. Because you did a little Instagram reel because you are good at reels. I am not I love good the at reels. reels. <laughs> I stink at reels. I need like to hire a 22 year old to help me do some reels because <laughs> I'm suffering in the reels department. But you did a reel on what happens to your brain when you only eat 1500 calories a day. And I was like, Ooh, huh. 1500 calories. Like that's an interesting number, right? Because most of us know to demonize 1200 calories, Mm -hmm. right? 1200 too low, 1200 bad, right? Like we know Mm -hmm. that, but 1500, I mean, the math I remember learning in high school or college was you take what you want away and you Mm -hmm. add an extra zero on the end. And that's how many calories you need. And so 150, that doesn't sound like you're being unreasonable. I mean, you know, maybe if you're six foot two or five foot tall. I don't know, but, but 150 sounds like a decent weight for most people, right? That's Mm -hmm. a kind of, I think it's a little short of the average size of a woman. Right. Mm -hmm. And and so it's like, well, that's not extreme 1500 calories. You know, that's, that's a healthy diet, but you had some excellent points to make about how maybe it's not so healthy for our brains and and maybe our bodies too. So tell me what you said in that reel. Well, you know, the, the main thing that I, I wanted to talk about was our basal metabolic rate. So our basal metabolic rate is how many calories we need to consume every day to keep us alive, to keep our organs doing what they need to do. And really for most people, and it, it, it varies from person to person, I'm sure it does depend on your height, your weight, all of that. On average, most people it's around 1500 calories. It's okay. just what you need to consume to stay alive. And so you know, and that doesn't count. Now that's just, if you're laying in your bed all day long, you're doing nothing, no movement. You're not even getting, maybe you're getting up to go to the bathroom. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe you're just laying there and you have to have 1500 just hit the table really hard and getting fired up. You have to have 1500 calories to stay alive. So what a lot of people would do when you factor an activity and you multiply it. And if anybody wants, really wants to look at this and it is interesting. Cause you know what? I've never recommended tracking calories, but now I kind of recommend tracking calories to make sure you're eating enough mm. and you're not going into starvation mode because it's worth looking into when you put these numbers in, you go, Oh, I am, I'm not eating enough. I'm not eating what I need for my hormones. I'm not eating what I need for my digestion, you know, all of that. So all to say, so you put in that number, you can Google it, duck, duck, go at whatever you use for your search engine these days (laughs) and just look for basal metabolic rate and put in your height, weight, whatever. Then they'll give you like an activity amount, like depending on, you know, maybe you exercise two days a week, four days a week, whatever. And it makes your basal metabolic rate go up. So for somebody like me, and I'm I would say pretty active and not necessarily, and I'm not saying this, I'm not, I I like moving my body. I like yoga. I like walking. I like doing something because it makes me feel good. Um, that's a whole other topic for a whole different show. We cover that and refocus Mm -hmm. (laughs) the whole exercise thing, but yeah, I'm pretty active. So probably you add maybe another 500 calories to that. So now my basal metabolic rate say is like 1900, 2000 calories to keep me alive when I'm being active. Now, many people would say, okay, what you want to do is drop your calories five by 500 or whatever that number is. Well, now we're back at basal metabolic rate, right? That's not going to be helpful. And then you have a lot of people that are just saying on a standard, go to 1200 calories, go to 1300, Mm -hmm. go to no, Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Because that's by far underneath that basal metabolic rate. So again, it's, it's hard to say, you know, I can, I can be general because I don't know, you know, with everybody, it's going to be different. But when we're talking about weight loss, we've had it so backwards with the calorie conversation because calories, this isn't something bad. This is energy calories Mm -hmm. just equal. That's what calories mean. Mm -hmm. It means 
energy, energy you need for your body. Would you restrict gas from your car? You know, (laughs) would you say, I'm only going to go to 50% today and we'll see how far we can go. You better make it car. See how how long we make it. (laughs) No, that's, that's just ridiculous. Same thing for your body. If you're restricting what you need on a, just a base level to function. And you know, your basal metabolic rate is around 1500 and you're eating 1200, 13. And I know so many women who do this because of dieting, because our metabolisms are so jacked for lack of a better word. Like we now we don't eat enough Mm -hmm. because we're used to not eating enough. Mm -hmm. And so our bodies have us in kind of chronic famine, famine mode. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. that's just, that was the main point of, and I I can go into, you know, what actually happens. So, (laughs) so, okay. So like just real life, a couple illustrations Mm -hmm. from my life. Okay. So I used to be a fitness instructor and I know when I taught classes, so I would teach kickboxing. This was a long time ago, <laughs> but I would teach kickboxing. And so there would be combos, right? It would be, so it's like jab, hook, uppercut, cross. And I would come up with like eight different moves in each combo. And my brain would just like hmm. go. And I would literally be standing in front of the class, like, was it jab? Like, and trying to keep going, like, mm-hmm. you know, cheery, you know, but my brain could not find the information. And so I started to kind of realize, oh, that's a glucose thing. Like I don't mm-hmm. have enough sugar to make my brain work. And so then I kind of had to start because I would try to teach a class without eating, right? You know, oh, it's better to exercise in the morning without eating. That was one of the rules that I had been taught. And, and then even now, I've started to realize that like, so I teach at my kids homeschool co-op and last week I was busy and they're working on our house. So I didn't have a kitchen. So I didn't have anything for breakfast and I just didn't have an opportunity to eat all morning. And I got to lunch and I was just angry, right? The Mm -hmm. hangry. And, and so I ate as much as I could in that little bit of time, but then all afternoon I was suffering. I was just exhausted that day. And I thought, you know, I think that that's about calorie regulation. My body didn't have enough. Mm -hmm. And like your car illustration, I'm like, you know, teetered out along the side of the road, (laughs) trying Mm -hmm. to keep going, but there's no fuel and catching up later just doesn't work. Like we have to keep fueling. So talk to me about, okay, what does 1500 calories when you go below that basal metabolic rate, what's that doing to my brain? What's that doing to other things in my body? Yeah. Well, the first thing is it really affects digestion because Mm -hmm. again, what it's doing is it's putting you in fight or flight. And we know when we're in fight or flight, it halts digestion or alters it, whatever the body needs to do, right? This is protective. This is wonderful that our bodies do this. It's just, (laughs) we're using it in the wrong way, you know? So it does, it, it messes with our digestion. So you have people who have chronic stomach issues and it's a lot of that food anxiety. I'm always amazed the amount of people that I see who have chronic stomach issues, who also Mm -hmm. have anxiety. It's very, very connected. And so they have all these stomach issues. They can't figure it out. They can't play, you know, is it this food? or is it that food? Maybe you're just malnourished, you know, and it's in, you're in fight or flight. Um, the other thing, hormone, hormone issues, hormone regulation. We have, this is where periods get irregular or go missing, go completely MIA that happens. That's super common in the fitness world. So, you know, we see when we're looking at fit, following fitness people on Instagram and Facebook and all those places where we're like, oh man, she looks so good. Look at all her workouts. What we don't see is that she doesn't get a period. And some people are like, oh, that's great. I'm not, that's actually like, that's a vital sign of your body, not our periods. If there's something off with our period, it's, it's the same thing as, you know, looking at how is your heart beating? You know, what's your heart rate? What's your blood pressure? What's your temperature period is one of those signs that you're like, it needs to be there. It needs to be consistent and anything in between there's something off. And, you know, I'm not talking about perimenopause. That's a whole other conversation, but you know, I mean, there are a lot of women, they've just missed their periods and never got them back. And that can have to do with, you are stressed out. Just your body physically is in fight or flight. You're running from a tiger every single day, every day. And you know, our body doesn't know the difference. Our body is designed to protect us, to find safety. And so 
there's no use in reproducing. There's no use in having a child when you're going through a famine, right? Talk about wonderful protection from our heavenly father, <laughs> you know, like he, know, he knew to prepare our bodies so that when we're going through hard times, we don't have a period because can't feed a baby. If you, you know, I mean, I just think that that's another way, just this is not, these are not horrible things again, to beat our bodies up about. These are things to embrace as part of the design, part of the protection. And now it's just going a little haywire. And so, yes, so definitely the hormones. So I mentioned digestion hormones, your mental health, that one's huge. Hey, before you go to mental health though, let's fill out that hormones thing, just even a little step further, Mm -hmm. because you said the body's, you know, it's doesn't make sense to have a baby if you're Mm -hmm. going into famine but we've got an epidemic of infertility. Oh, absolutely. Right. I mean, so I think there's a connection there for sure. Yeah. I mean, I I think we have a lot, a lot of menstrual and irregularities in general. Um, and I I think there are a lot of contributing factors too. Mm -hmm. Uh, we live in a, in a pretty toxic world, you know, just, a pesticides and all, you know, we could go down that. So again, nothing to make anybody have food fear, but yeah, we're, we're living in some interesting times as far as what we are exposed to emotionally, internally, mm-hmm. environmentally. And it's just a perfect storm of, of chaos for, for, you know, procreating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, for sure. And that even impacts, I mean, and we're talking about hormones, of course, that's going to impact cortisol. It's going to impact blood sugar. It's going to impact um, thyroid function. That's, that's a huge one. I'm seeing that's an epidemic right now is thyroid dysfunction. I mean, we've never seen that before. Like we have now, and, and it's, this is just another one of those new modern issues that we're just considering normal and moving on and slap some pills on it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm grateful for the things that we have, the tools that we have, but my big thing is looking at, okay, what's causing this? Like, what can we do to, to address this from the ground up. And so much of it, again, 90% of it is stress related. And that's something to be aware of and giving your body a chance to feel safe. Mm -hmm. We don't feel safe. And so our brains don't feel safe now Mm -hmm. because what's happening. We're not digesting. We're not, we're not getting enough protein to create neurotransmitters that we need to feel safe. We are not digesting. So we're not even able to absorb and utilize the nutrients that we get from our food, whatever they are. And our, our brain is malnourished. Our brain is an, for a lot of people, a lot of women, it's our brain is malnourished of of fat, which is Mm -hmm. so important. Um, and so demonized, but really important Mm -hmm. for mental health. And gosh, I remember my first extreme calorie restriction when I was in high school, I was on swim team and I was swimming every morning at six in the morning. And I like your example, I, I couldn't function. Mm -hmm. I would get out of the pool dizzy about to pass out. And I have this documented in my journal. And I will also say, I think I might've said this before on a podcast with you, or maybe we just talked about it. I experienced my first manic hypomanic episode, not long after Mm -hmm. I do believe there's a connection Mm -hmm. and, and that connection is, is, is adrenaline. Mm -hmm. When we are in fight or flight, our body is pumping. So that's why women feel great at first. Diets are addicting and they feel wonderful because you're running on adrenaline. And so for me, it manifested in who, who mania, like I'm excited. I'm living life. I'm not sleeping. I'm not, you know, I don't need to eat who needs food. I'm, I'm living off of stress chemicals and that's so dangerous. And we get that with long distance runners, same kind of deal. It's, it's kind of a adrenaline junkie dopamine dysregulation thing where we have women who are running these long distances and just surviving off of very few calories Mm. and nutrients. And so again, their bodies are are crashing. We're crashing and our bodies are not finding any kind of nourishment or safety from food. And that is a really, it's a nice way to be kind to your body is to feed it. You know, we do that for our kids. Right. We do that. Yeah. I was, I was talking to someone the other day about how like a plate of lasagna is like a warm hug. Yes. You know, that's okay. Yeah, sometimes okay. you just need a warm hug, you know, like it's you don't okay need for, a warm hug yeah. 24 hours a day, but sometimes you just need a warm hug and we mm-hmm. have to allow yes, ourselves that warm hug. The right? comfort we, we right. demonize food as comfort, but right. my goodness, I don't think God would have made breast milk sweet. If right. we weren't supposed to take comfort from right. sweet things, right. um, we wouldn't have honey or fruit or, you know, all of these things right. that have been made available in nature. Yeah. And that's a sign, you know, that, that God provides these things things that we need. And we just, food is only fuel, you know, and I can only have this amount of calories. And it's like, 
wow, I was designed to consume. And we know, you know, in the research, this amount of calories for my body. And I'm thinking that I know better about how to beat my body into submission than the God who provided all of these organs to function on the food that he provided. I mean, it's just, well, and, and what's the last thing that Jesus did with his friends before he was arrested to go to the cross, they ate a meal together. Mm -hmm. There had to have been some comfort intended there, right? Like there's, you know, that, that, so anyway, yeah, I, I, I love all that. Okay. Well, we've got a couple minutes left. You have to tell us what is 1500 calories a day due to my brain due to mental health. Yeah. Mental health. I mean, it's that whole, it's what I said. If it's, if we're shutting down digestion, we are not getting satiety signals. Our brain is dysregulated. Our brain stays in fight or flight. We cannot access. So when we're in fight or flight, we can't access the prefrontal cortex, which is what we need for empathy, decision-making. It's what we need Mm. just to connect to other humans. And so if we are staying in dysregulation due to being malnourished and due to being in famine mode, our connection between our amygdala, which is that you know, response center of the brain where we make those quick reactions, it's not quite connecting with the prefrontal cortex that sets, uh, maybe that's not a good decision to make, you know, so we can be snappier at people. We can be cranky. We can be hangry, angry, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, like you said, and we're not going to make good decisions where it throws off our focus and our concentration and our learning. It also really can inhibit uh, memory and learning. And man, I don't know, you know, who needs to hear this? but women, your brains are under attack right now. Mm -hmm. Dementia, Alzheimer's by 2050. I think I heard that it's, it's a, the numbers are going to triple. Like we are up against a lot just as females Mm -hmm. brain wise. And from a brain health perspective and how much of that has to do with these stressors that we're carrying. I don't know. I, I, you know, I think it's, it's going to (laughs) be unfortunately interesting to see what happens in in the future. Mm -hmm. If we don't get a handle on these stressors that are really causing our brains to, to malfunction. And one of those stressors is dieting and restriction. Well, and you know, I think the height of irony, Aaron, is that most women would say, I have to diet to be healthy. Like I have to eat this amount of calories so I can be healthy. And I mean, I hope what they've heard through the, (laughs) through the conversation, this last half hour is maybe that's not the best way to be healthy. You know, maybe 1500 calories a day, even though it may mathematically seem like it's going to take you down the journey of weight loss. Maybe that's not the way to do it. Maybe that's not the healthiest way to do it. And, you know, you said about how like it shuts off your prefrontal cortex. And I was thinking, yes, that's why when I'm hungry and my husband says, well, where do you want to go to eat? I'm like, I've got nothing. Like I cannot make a decision. (laughs) Like you are going to have to decide because there's no Mm decision-making like process available to me right now. Right. So, um, yeah, so I love all that. Well, so you and I do this course called refocus 21. It's available on my website, uh, compared to who.me and it's under the courses tab on the front page. We have made it self-paced now because we Mm -hmm. had a super fun time with groups, but sometimes it just wasn't convenient to, get everyone together all at once. So we've decided just to make it self-paced, but we will still, as you have questions throughout it, like we'll still comment back to you and chime in and, and, you know, give you some feedback, but Aaron, your part of that is nutrition. And I've had people over the last year or so that we've done it say, oh, I don't need any more nutrition information. Mm-hmm. Like I have a PhD in dieting because I've been doing it for so many years, <laughs> but you're not talking about dieting. Can you just like tell everyone a little bit about what your part of the refocus program is? Yeah. I'm really big on addition over restriction. What can we add in that's nourishing? That makes our bodies feel safe. That's nutrient dense that we can utilize for brain function, for digestion, for hormone function, you know, all of that. And and like I said, when I meet with clients one-on-one, I don't give them food lists, but I do give them like, these are all really amazing foods for brain health because we have been provided crazy amounts of nutrients and fruits and vegetables and protein and even grains, you know, Mm -hmm. grains have a place, white potatoes. Ooh, I love white potatoes, (laughs) you know, sweet potatoes, the carby vegetables, you know, there are so there's so much value in that. 
And unfortunately, sometimes we trust a, a diet bar or a, you know, mm-hmm. keto chips over a banana. And it's right. like, well, come on now. Right. <laughs> like, do you, do you, yeah. you know, it's just an interesting, so I'm really big on how can we restore and, and play with food and enjoy our food again and enjoy mm-hmm. the food that's right there in front of you, yeah. but you'd rather go for the diet food, you know? And so that's, that's really my thing is just restoring, but that stress management piece, adjusting the mindset about your food. Oh my gosh. That's huge. It's huge. If you're sitting there staring at brownies going, I can't eat these, can't eat these, can't eat these, can't eat these. And then you eat like 10 of them. Well, you know, you're not going to digest them, but if you're just like, wow, I love brownies. Brownies are great. Brownies remind me of when I was a kid and I baked with my mom, blah, 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 blah. I'm having a brownie. Guess what? Your body's like, yeah, we're digesting this brownie, you know, and we're going to like it. So, I mean, it's just, there's a lot of that. That's really important to, to focus on instead of just demonizing the everything, you know? No, I love that. I love that. Well, Erin, thank you so much for being on the show today. Tell everyone where they can connect with you or, you know, maybe even connect with you for coaching because I know you do coaching virtually. So tell everyone where they can find your show and where they can connect with you. Yes. Uh, my website is sparking wholeness.com Instagram. I'm sparking wholeness. I've been really, really posting a lot more about mental health nutrition lately because it's so needed right now. But if you are in East Texas, I'm also working at a place called living well, Tyler. It is just a holistic counseling and wellness center. We have amazing counselors and and I do the food called food therapy (laughs) there. (laughs) So yeah, that's how you can find me. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on the show today, Aaron. And thank you for listening to the show today. I hope something in today's show has helped you stop comparing and start living. 